Now, I just watched a terrific video on how to excavate a vertical uh, tunnel. However, I see a tremendous uh, cost in specialization because such a machine is going to be, you know, one of a kind or maybe there's 10 of them, you know, but it's, it's going to be incredibly expensive to produce the machine. Now the machine also relies on several cranes being present the entire time. Also because of the specialization, if there's a breakdown, it's not like you can just swap out uh, and get going again. Uh, so you have an extremely powerful full-time crane rental or acquisition that's just sitting there. Uh, and you've got incredibly high expe you know, machine cost. And you've also got all of this weight of you know, these settling tanks um, you know, to, to filter stuff out. It, it's basically a very, very expensive job. So let's approach it uh, more conventionally with the goal of reducing the cost at least 50%. So we start off uh, with digging the hole with an excavator. That's the current beginning anyway. And uh, so we, we dig the hole out with the excavator. Uh, the next thing we do is lower these pieces of steel. Uh, so you have a, a curved piece of steel and each one has uh, you know, a right angle with bolt holes in it. So that it's basically you know, a, a little, th uh, it's a version of a water uh, storage tank where they make these circular tanks. And you know, that certainly, if you were really on the cheap, could work as well. Um, but having dug out the excavator area, you then uh, lower in the you lower in the uh, these steel sections of the curve uh, to to form a. A cylinder of steel bolted together and it comes up and has a lip and a lip here comes up has a lip and a lip here. Once these have been bolted together by people in the first six feet maybe yeah let's let's just say this is six, the first six feet now concrete is poured into this structure and you have a one foot uh, you know a one foot pad of, of concrete here and a minimum of a foot wide between the ground and here. Now you could put some you know a little bit of simple forming to clean up this mess you you know a little bit you, you wouldn't have to pour into the ground but I think the friction is beneficial and concrete is so cheap compared to the kind of machinery and rental that we're we're using you know with let's just say a hundred and thirty dollars a ton for concrete versus however many thousands a day for renting such a large crane to hold that you know gadget up and down this is going to save a tremendous amount of money. So now we have a poured concrete wall that's down to here and we have a steel uh, tank. Uh, next we take a little bit of the dirt excavated here and we create a ramp into the tank to drive down that six feet just with an excavator. So we drive the excavator uh, into 
uh, into the, the structure. And this can be done almost immediately. The, the concrete is hardening um, such that within 24 hours it's relatively strong. Um, and the reason these lips are here is that is so that you can dig out underneath this section here without the concrete falling down. So it's kind of the opposite of the other system. The other system is using bentonite and you know liquefaction and settling this huge thing down, which again takes huge equipment. Rather than that, let's do the opposite. Let's create a stable top. So now the excavator is sitting on in this area here and digging out uh, an area here uh, and then moving into this area and then digging out an area here and moving into that area. So we go down another six feet uh, in in depth and and we dig out under here with just a normal excavator and a skilled operator. Now the, the benefit is the excavator is is sitting up in here in the cab above any possible slide. So, um, and if the soil is sandy, I mean, this is where a soils, you'd, you would do a soils bore uh, here, here, and here, uh, down to the full depth of the structure. So you already knew what material you were do dealing with. Now this is a huge step up in anticipation. Highly sandy soil, it is possible you could get a diagonal slide of the concrete structure itself, in which case it needs to be extended over here uh, and have a couple of anchors uh, because this structure might need some tie backs, you know, to, to go diagonally into the soil. But you don't know that until you do a soil bore. In most cases, this is not moving at all uh, as an excavator operator. You know, th this is just fine. So, um, so now you're, 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 you're slowly digging yourself into a pit because once you uh, dig down another six feet and bolt in the panels, which are just on the front side, the back is dirt, so you bolt in the panels, uh, and then you have your regular dirt back here. In, in the top uh, port, you, you, have, you have, when you, when you create these curved uh, steel plates with these little bolt holes here so they, they, they fit together, One of them needs to have a vent up at the top, and one of them needs to have a connection for a pump truck so that you can put on the hose that is at the end of concrete pumping. Um, because you can, no, you can no longer get stuff down here. Now, the other option is actually to install a vertical pipe in the fitting here that keeps going down. The, the, the biggest problem is kind of keeping it clean. Um, but this would be another solution, would be to uh, have a four inch PVC pipe, or even a six inch PVC pipe that is in between you have the steel here that's getting lower and lower, and then you have the ground back here. And the first pour, you wouldn't pour into the concrete pipe. And then the second 
uh, pour. You would uh, pour into one uh, concrete pipe. And you, you would have the option of inserting, you know, every couple of feet a four inch PVC pipe around the hose and abandoning the one that filled with concrete. Uh, so you'd, in the second one, you'd, you would pour, uh, you'd pour the concrete all the way down, you know, to the bottom. Um, and as you were, if, if we were looking from a, a top view, we have our concrete pad, then we have our, our ground, you know, area like here. And then basically every 18 inches we would have a four inch PVC pipe going down. Uh, so to, to, to relate to the number of lifts. So that's one possibility. Um, it's not that important, but it is a nice, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it is a nice feature. And if you put in, um, so, so what you do then is at the bottom, you have the pipe go a little bit below the concrete by digging, by putting a little bit of loose gravel or sand before each pour. And then you extend the you extend the concrete pouring uh, into you know on top of the sand. And then when you dig out underneath uh, here, the sand comes down. You can make a connection after you've dug out to here. You then make a connection with the PVC and glue on a a section that goes down to here and you put sand right here and then you put the steel casing right here uh, and then you pour the you know the, the, the cement all into right here uh, which, of course, moves around the circle. Um, and then uh, you continue down. Now, another option would be to... Uh, now, I think that's the best because there's likely to be a slide if you just, you know, built this side all the way down and never poured any concrete in the whole thing uh, all you know each step of the way there's likely at some point to be a slide uh, and then you can't get concrete in there so you don't have quite as much strength so um, so pouring concrete as you go and then what you do is uh, you're now at this level here. So you dig out this level and this level. Now, you're, you've now got a steel ring that's coming down here. Now, the steel is really great because you can weld to it. So there's a couple of things that can now go in place. One is a ladder, you know, that can be either brought down or you can have rungs, basically. Uh, you know, and these, this, this whole steel piece can be pre-engineered so that it has rungs for going up. It can also be pre-fabricated pre, pre, uh, so that it has a pulley system. 
um, because the uh, the best uh, the, the, the easiest way to get continual soil to go up would be to have a pulley system which So once you have a loop like this, you can have a, a pulley system. Um, and one way, to, one way to design this, because um, we have to be mindful that the excavator is probably going to be digging with, um, let's just say, a three-foot toothed bucket. And so generating roughly a yard. Um, there are a couple of different ways to, uh, and then there will also be, uh, uh, there will also be uh, a, at times, larger rocks that are discovered and need to be lifted out. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a couple of different approaches. One is to uh, attach, you know, bucket scoops, you know, onto a chain uh, or cable that, you know, that just keeps coming up. Um, and, you know, you just pile the excavator drops its piles of dirt here and the machine scoops them away and the excavator, which has a little blade, you know, just plows it, dumps them and plows it in that direction and this, you know, thing takes it up. Um, and one of the great things would be that a dump truck could drive up to the structure and not have to have a, a crane, basically, or a specialty piece of equipment. And so if we were to have a piece, like this is one side of the wall, the, the steel wall, and then we have our concrete pad here, and then we put our ramp here, uh, and we have a piece that goes up about 15 feet uh, above this structure here. Um, it could then put it on a conveyor belt. Um, so it, it, it comes up to here, falls, let's see. We have here, here, here. and drops it up to here on a conveyor belt that takes it down to where a truck can then get loaded up and drive off at any point. Um, and where this conveyor belt can start and stop. Uh, it could also go into a hopper here, but this is something that's all very portable. These conveyor belts, etc., are very portable. Um, dump trucks are all over the place and this mechanism here can be extended 
simply by as, as we go deeper into the hole, we can just put another pulley and, and give some more slack, expand this section, which can be on a winch, so that we disconnect the pin, give, go down another six feet, put a six foot bit of chain in, put the tensioner back, and now we've got the same system going down. So by having these steel plates pre-puzzled, uh, um, and labeled, you can you can uh, you know manage that. You can also because it's a slippery surface. As long as you can put a bat, a, a, a grappling net uh, that can carry maybe five or ten tons with a strap, um, anytime you get. A, a large rock, you can put a, a winch um, close enough that you can then uh, grab it with an excavator and uh, remove it. Um, and that would be another option. If this is a slower moving thing, to have one larger excavator up at the top loading the trucks, those are readily available. Or, and they can also grab uh, any boulders that are uncovered here. Now the nice thing is if you if you hit a, a rock layer down in here, first of all you know it's coming because of the bores, but you've now got poured concrete and steel all the way down to your your rock layer. So you can now climb down the rungs, lower the breaker hammers, um, you know, to, to fit onto the excavator. Uh, because there's a breaker, there's a breaker hammer attachment uh, that can break up the rock. There's also a thing called dex pan for drilling. So you can also lower down uh, SDS Max drills and do 18 inch uh, boring with five or six people all working at once, just you know, drilling down, putting in the dex pan, it expands. You can use, of course, dynamite, but this is a slow dynamite. It takes a couple of days. But what we're doing here is semi-trucks Again, all over the place. 20 foot flatbeds, 40 foot flatbeds, all over the place. Can drive up with this pre engineered, pre labeled bolt. It's, it's pre assembled uh, at the manufacturer and then it's disassembled. And the first thing that is brought is, you know, these sections here and the next that is brought is, you know, these sections here. Um, now this mini excavator is lowering itself piece by piece. So if there's rock, etc., cetera, as, as long as it's brought into one foot, you know, chunks, it can either be bagged up and winched up uh, or it can uh, be if it's you know fragments thrown in that same bucketing uh, loop that's going up and down, the the machine can just keep going lower, 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 lower uh, until let's say you go down a hundred feet. And you've now got a steel encased concrete thing that's, let's just say you do 40, if you, if you did this 40 feet in diameter, and that's the other thing I like about this system, is there's no size limit. We could be doing 40 feet in diameter, we could be doing 30 feet, we could be doing 20 feet. That's 
just given to the steel fabricators at the point uh, when you decide what the structure is for in your design. Um, and uh, you know, you, you could also, if the long-term plan is for there to be an elevator going up and down, then it might make a lot of sense to have that elevator shaft attached, you know, that slowly goes down and goes up to, you know, also carry rocks, boulders, and people from the get-go. Uh, and the elevator itself gets replaced, but the cabling and mechanism and the electrical cables, you know, that are being fed down can continue to uh, be built down um, so that there's a, you know, a, a platform, let's say, that can go all the way up to the top and then dump onto a conveyor and then be, you know, brought up to a dump truck. Um, so we, we work this excavator down and it could be, if it was like a 40 foot diameter shaft, you'd have three excavators working simultaneously or, you know, there's nothing stopping uh, two or three people doing this entire thing. You know, that's the beauty of this type of dynamic. Um, the same winch system that brings the boulders up can, can lower the sheets of metal down. Uh, the excavator can serve as part of the lifting capacity down below. So if you have uh, one excavator operator, a dump truck contractor, and two crew members up top lowering steel plates down, then climbing down the steel run ladder, uh, or going down the, you know, the, the built elevator uh, shaft operating, you know, this mechanism up here. This can just sink down lower and lower and lower, and you dig out under the area here a good way. Then you bolt in your 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 sheets and you dig out on the other side a good way and bolt on your 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 uh, your sheets and then um, pour your concrete in which can be you know just a concrete truck backing up to the area and uh, the easiest thing being to pump into one of these not yet filled four inch pipes and pressurize the whole the whole system and and uh, the excavator can bang the steel rims as a as a crude vibrator um, you know just to make sure there's there's no air pockets and you know when you've maximized the pressure and it just can't get any more in you abandon the uh, the pipe, the concrete truck drives off, uh, and you're good for the day. Overnight, that concrete will set, and then you can continue down the next day. Um, this excavator can just slowly descend all the way to the bottom of the, the, the pit. Now, you then want to go down below the pit, what your, the end level, and install a, you know, a, a, a false bottom. This could again be done in steel, where uh, your last steel plates would connect and have legs going down with holes through the side. And this is to collect water and to provide access for a, uh, a sump pump or multiple pumps. Or, depending on the purpose, if this entire 
vertical thing was a water storage tank, you know, then this would just be the pump chamber. Um, and, and this could become a steel water tank that's 100 feet deep and 40 feet wide and, um, you know, a reservoir, etc. In which case, if groundwater comes in, you know, so much the better. The filtration is, is later, or maybe it's for fire uh, or agriculture, in which case it doesn't need to be uh, treated in any way. Um, but if this was for, say, mini storage, which was one of the options shown, shown there uh, in the video, then you, you, you need, you know, three or four separate pumps uh, in, you know, so that none of them fail. And you need to pump up through, you know, these four inch pipes or maybe some two inch pipes put in as well in the vertical concrete and, and you know, getting the water away from the area. Uh, and, you know, you, you'd have like a four inch, a four foot false bottom, uh, you know, for water and stuff to gather. Now, um, one of the, there's a couple of approaches now that you've got a steel concrete cage throughout the entire thing, um, one of the possibilities would be to float the excavator out. And to do this, you would simply put uh, a foam raft panel uh, and 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 carefully balance the excavator as you lifted the water you know as you raised the water and simply by attaching the bucket of the excavator to the winch so that it's forced in an upward direction and getting in the right place you could then fill the tank, the entire tank with water, which if it was a water tank makes a lot more sense, uh, and float your excavator up to the very top and then drive it off. And in this way, you have achieved uh, the same result with no less safety and at least at least a 90% reduction in cost